everybody, it's Party Town Mom. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show, sitting here in the mothership that is Studio 22. Of course, the puppet master, Mark, sitting over here at the helm driving this thing. Hello. Hey, buddy. I, I feel as though... I feel as though your your and our relationship has kind of like gone to a new level. Really, yeah. really. Do you yeah. get that feeling? Is it mutual, or are we still the same? You know, I think I think it's deepened a little bit in the <laughs> last deepened. in the last few weeks. Yeah. Like you guys who ever watch you watch this show, you know, Mark doesn't say a lot, right? His favorite words are pretty good. Like, how you doing? Pretty <laughs> <Yeah>. good. <laughs> how was your weekend? Pretty good. Like that's his words, right? It, but he's a, he's a great guy. He's a genuine guy. He's a funny guy. A lot of people don't know that, but he's he's a funny funny guy, and. Uh, but I, you're starting to give me more facial expressions. Oh, okay. Like you're not okay. necessarily using right. more words, right. but your facial expressions. Just the expressions, are becoming yeah. more understanding and deeper, yeah. and I just feel yeah. a strong connection there. We're yeah. simpatico at this I'm, point. I'm opening up, you yeah. know? I yeah. love it. The puppet master. Yeah. Candice, the queen. I'm trying to stop saying Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians. I know. You changed it last queen time, C. and you're going you're back. Queen C, right? Okay, yeah. I don't know. I guess. I, it just doesn't roll off. With it doesn't work. Candice, queen of the Ethiopians. And here's the thing. It's just like it's just like when the dude called Chris Como Fredo the other day. He'll always be Fredo. Is it? Because, oh. he, because he showed his ass over it, right? <laughs> like I'm like, if he had just let it go and walked it off, but from now on, you he's want- Chris Fredo Cuomo. Yeah. For the rest of his life. You want me to have that kind of reaction no, to what you're... No, I don't want you to, like, lose your sh** to get some ratings on this thing, but... Wait, well, we might hold on to that. Let's that do that. That might bring like ratings. Like, an angry woman, like, if you just come out of your clothing like the Hulk... No, nope, that's <laughs> like where you that, lost your parents me. parents would be so proud. Like an angry white woman? Like, you're, you're the angry white... Well... <laughs> you're why not white. Wow, this what the took hell? a turn. Why okay. are you assuming my, gen- my race? <laughs> wow. Yeah. I can't believe you went... Well, next next week you'll be giving yourself a man's name or something. All right, you're white enough. Thank you. But see, the beautiful thing is like you can claim white privilege, and then at some time when somebody says, "Well, you're claiming white privilege," you could have, "I'm Hispanic. I'm queen of the Ethiopians." Yeah, they have no idea. They, but I'm no, just gonna you play are that a card. Mystery. I'm gonna I'm gonna play that card for a little bit. I'm waiting for the 23 and Me sponsorship. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 100 percent white. Sitting over in the peanut gallery, we got a special surprise for you. My girl Ashley Camerath is sitting in here. Oh, girl, I hadn't seen you in a long, long time. It was a surprise. You just popped in and we were able to sit in. And it was Happy great. Happy to be in Big D. I know. Figure why not? I want you to, we're going to have fun on this podcast. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a really, really good one. I've been excited about this thing for a while. I got my buddy Jamie Kilstein who's sitting over here. He is the host of the Jamie Kilstein podcast and comedian. He's been an author, writer. He's been on the Joe Rogan podcast numerous times. He's got several different things, claims to fame, and we're going to talk about all of those things. Ashley, I want you to chime in because this is going to be fun because we were talking off air about some of the stuff. Jamie, you're a weird evolution of things, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also super awkward. My nickname is also the queen of Ethiopia. Uh, um, so just add that to my list as yeah. well. Royalty. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. like an amalgamation of like a bunch of unmarketable. <laughs> is is essentially my career. I mean, I like that though because you know at least you own that. And that's the way I look at it. It's like you know, like I have a lawyer friend who told me a few years ago. He said you're the first guy I ever know have ever known that got famous by pretending to be famous. Like you had you had that's nothing. So good. Yeah. You like you didn't even have any talent, but you just started pretending like you were somebody. You just and had that sudden, confidence. Yeah, people just started believing it. <sighs> Dude, I want that. That's like the Conor McGregor thing. Yeah. You just walk in, you f- believe it, and you're like, I'm going to knock this guy out in the first round. You knock him out in the first round. And then they're like, wait, who's that Irish guy? Can he even, you know? Yeah, exactly. I was in Vegas uh, when McGregor fought. Oh, gosh, I guess it's been two years now. It was, it, it was uh, December 10th, and I remember that for specific reasons. But that was when he fought two years ago at MGM. And there were 10,000 Irishmen yeah. there for the fight. Like the island of Ireland yeah. was uninhabited at that point yep. in terms of males. It was a great they time to go check out the girls. put up a closed sign. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like done, yeah, the Dublin airport. In said, Vegas no. for a weekend? Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you, these guys drink professionally. I mean, yeah, like it's, it's legit. And then they're going through the, the thing and these mobs of Irish guys. And they're going, oh, 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 yeah. oh. It's like just nuts. And then they're just singing their songs and their chants and their... Yeah, it's great for, like, casual drinkers to be around those people to be like, oh, I don't have a problem. I can keep drinking. Yeah. Because, like, you feel better just by comparison. You're like, I'll be fine. Like, I thought I thought I could drink until I went off to school at the University of Georgia. Yeah. When I was a kid, and then I got around the professionals. Oh, and yeah. And I was like, oh, I got to stop this or I'm going to kill myself. Yeah. Yeah. You quit drinking a while back. I stopped. Well, I stopped for... I stopped for like a couple of years and then my life imploded and I started again. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, no. I, when I started stand up, 
mm-hmm. uh, again. We were talking about this off air. Um, but if you decide to go into stand-up comedy, you're not like, oh, I should start reading like self-help books and doing push-ups. You're like, I guess I should be a cokehead. Uh, <laughs> like you are applauded in stand-up by kind of like how much of like a screw-up you are, right. right? So I spent like a year uh, totally away just coaching MMA, jiu-jitsu. My diet was on point. I was super healthy. I was back doing stand-up for like a month and I was like stoned all day, drinking again, back to being depressed. And now I feel like I found a balance. Mm-hmm. Um, and so so yeah, so I stopped drinking. It's probably been like five months I haven't yeah. drank. That's that's commendable. I mean, for people who feel like that's something I need to do in my life, like like it's something that's controlling me, affecting me. Did you get to that point? No. So I'm in kind of this weird place where I have alcoholism in my family mm-hmm. uh, and I have an addictive personality. Mm-hmm. So, and that can be for good things too. Like when I was 17, I was like, I want to start stand up. And at no point was I like, all right, I'll go to college and like mess around. I'm like, I guess I'm dropping out of high school. And then I started taking the train into New York every day. Like I just like, I'm not good at many things, but the things I'm good at, like I just go really hard with it. And so I have that addictive personality. Honestly, the only reason I think I'm not a raging alcoholic or dead in a gutter is because I'm a like I'm a lightweight so if I have like five drinks I'm like I don't like this like if I have the spins uh, I'm acting like leaving Las Vegas like this is just like my total like so, rock Nick cage oh just over <laughs> yeah um, but like I do it with food I've done it with sex I do it with um, uh, I've done it with weed yeah. like at least once every three months I'll hear some like Rogan interview or like Childish Gambino, Seth Rogen, Chappelle, and I'm like, I'm gonna be a stoner again, and then I'm just like a piece of shit. just like eat bagel sandwiches and like go to sleep at six. Like I'm every bad like stoner cliche. Uh, so I think I just I function better when I'm healthy. I function better when I'm fighting, when I'm eating well. But then there's that artist part of me that's like, but do I have to be a to be funny yeah. or do I have to be a screw up and then I kind of go back but right now it's been yeah five months no drinking uh an edible on occasion and I feel pretty good yeah for, for those of you watching at home edibles that is THC in a gummy mm-hmm. form mm-hmm. or a brownie mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. Uh, or cookie or mommy you know, gummies or whatever. They, they call <laughs> yeah. them in the mommy world apparently yeah I mean you know I, my experience with gummies was this. So I was out in Colorado. I'd never eaten an edible. Yeah. All right. It's party time, Mom. I'd never eaten an edible. <laughs> so I was, uh, uh, I went to a dispensary. I was yeah. like, give me some gummies. And a friend of mine said, now remember, don't overeat those. I know. I know. Okay. Don't overeat those. And I was like, okay, I won't. So I ate one. Yeah. Well, two hours goes by and you're like, nothing. Big mistake. <laughs> Wasted my money here. Yep. So I was like, screw it. Yep. I'm eating another one. Well, the next thing I know, I'm at a friend of mine's house who lives in, in Denver. He's a comic, and, and I'm at his house, and we're hanging out. We're getting ready to go eat pizza, and the pizza just couldn't get there fast enough. I was like, and I found myself just wandering down the street. Yeah. I'd somehow managed to get my way out of his house, yep. in his yard, and just thank God I was still wearing clothing. Dude, when I, I grew up poor and in New Jersey— so if I ended up like super high, that means like I've been poisoned and I need to go to the hospital. Like we just had bad weed. And now that it's legal, it is so powerful. I feel like if I'm going to have an edible, I have to like say goodbyes to my family. Like I'm like going off to the war, like just in case, like I'll have like a bite of a brownie and I'm just like, you be safe when I'm gone. Like think, like I sound like a character from the notebook suddenly. And like, I, I have just become, and I'm 37, maybe it's cause I'm getting older, but the stuff is getting so strong that I have legitimately, if I have like a gummy or it feels like a psychedelic yeah. like trip, like it's getting out of hand. Yeah. It's like they lace it with LSD or something. It's, it's like, you need to listen to a Timothy Leary album or something like that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i was i was uh i had had a really back in january i had this really rough spot of weeks and i was tired and i was traveling and i was stressed and we were late we were going to do a show in denver again and i told the guy that travels with normally the guy that's sitting over there party foul steve who's not with us today i told him i said when we land take me to a dispensary yeah. i gotta go to i just gotta get something that just help will help me rest yeah so I go in there and I go. The, I get the indica, which I'm not an indica. I'm not. I'm not like my my concept of drugs. And you people talk amongst yourselves, you pious. Anyway, <laughs> like like my my drug of choice. Everybody knows is my whiskey. I'm always sipping on some whiskey. Yeah. And but I believe that the drug that you 
is best for you, or at least the one you're going to like the most, is the one that fits your personality. So if you're right. low-key and chill, you probably want to smoke. If you're hyper and you're crazy and you're ADD, you probably want to take Adderall or yeah, cocaine yeah. or whatever. And I'm seeing all this stuff, and I, I just kind of form these philosophies of being in the comedy world and seeing how people gravitate towards these things. So I tell him, I was like, give me an indica, because indica, indica couch. Yep. You know, you're just going to melt into it, and I just need to rest. I need to chill. So I'm going to take a couple of puffs off of a vape pen. Three hours later, I'm sitting on the edge of the hotel bed, butt naked, staring at the wall, going, I hate my life. Oh, What's wrong yeah. with my life? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Dude, I, I've had those moments where I'm like, but that's such a, it's one of those things where I've done it with alcohol, I've done it with weed, where I'm like, man, I'm really depressed. I guess I could fix it and figure out what's wrong, or I could just take drugs and hope that makes it better. <laughs> Therapy is expensive. Keep Therapy is so expensive. <laughs> I know. I uh, th That's really interesting. I've never heard, I actually do better, I think, with drinking mm -hmm. uh, than I do. Like, I don't get blackout. Mm -hmm. I don't. Like, I didn't really have a drinking problem. I've hung out with, like, AA people before. Yeah. And, uh, They're always looking for the best bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Leaving then, Yelp reviews. And they're just like, dude, you're not, a, you're not an alcoholic. Like, uh, they were like, can you, like, could you leave a drink half, like, empty? I was like, yeah, yeah. They're like, you don't have a problem. Yeah. Um, this is me, by the way, just trying to get some whiskey. Being like, I don't have a problem. Just give me some whiskey. <laughs> uh, but I do better with alcohol. I think that actually does fit my personality more. Yeah. Weed, I'm literally, I, I look like an anti-weed propaganda film where I'm just every terrible stereotype. Yeah. I mean, there are times where I'm like, I'm going to smoke and I'm going to write and I'll like leave my notebook out and like mark the page and I'll just walk by and be like, ah, no. And I'll just go right to the fridge and then I'm asleep by like yeah. nine. Bagel sandwiches. <laughs> Bagel sandwiches, yeah. baby. If you guys are just checking us out, sitting down with Jamie Kilstein, host of the Jamie Kilstein podcast, you need to tune in and subscribe to that and get all kinds of education with this dude because mm -hmm. my gosh funny funny stuff listen i you know I, I grew up around some alcoholics and i never liked being around drunk people because they Hate get it they're imbalanced yes and i don't like imbalance like i get around people and it makes me feel nervous like yeah. is, are they gonna break something tear something up start a fight are they gonna yeah. create some kind I and i don't like, like that kind out. of stress i don't want to be like jason Bourne. like where are the exits what can <laughs> yeah. i use as how like many a outlets are in the wall you know <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so I, you know, that truck out in the parking lot has a rifle in the back seat. I, I, I'm, so, like, I don't get drunk. I get accused of that some, from time to time just because I'm silly. But I'll drink just to because I enjoy the taste of the drink. And then if I start to feel that way, it's, I just go to bed. It's time to go to bed. Time to right. go home, go to bed. So, because I, I don't like being imbalanced. And that, but so I understand what you're saying on that because you're like, you look at this stuff and you're like, okay, I love the old uh, Bill Cosby deal in himself. The he, old Bill Cosby. The old Bill Cosby. Well, the old, oh, no, the old, old Bill, Bill Cosby was raping chicks. Yeah, yeah, the new one's in jail. Yeah. The new Bill Cosby. <laughs> new the Bill Cosby's new. getting a whole different kind of jello. <laughs> uh, but old Bill Cosby, but like intermediary Bill Cosby, back when we loved Bill Cosby. Sure. Because still, one of the greatest comedians of all time, one of the greatest yeah. storytellers, incredible. I mean, I, I ran the needle through the records, the actual vinyl records of Bill Cosby back in the day. Um, but when he did himself, and he was like, you know, well, why do you take drugs? He's like, well, it, it intensifies my personality. And he goes, well, what if you're an asshole? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, I, like, I've never gone on stage. This is just an admission and confession. I've never gone on stage, I don't think, having not at least taken a drink right. just to calm because i don't get stage fright right but i just want to relax yeah i used to i'm so hyperactive when i was uh when i was like starting to be like sort of successful with comedy i man i remember there was one time i think with me my problem is like confidence mm -hmm. so anytime like right now like I legitimately was like, I could have a drink, um, but it's it, it, it's not because I'm like, I want to drink. It's like, oh, you look cool drinking and I want to look. Cool. It's literally I've never gotten over that, like not cool kid in high school. Right. Yeah. So there was a time it was hard for me to quit cigarettes because I was like back when you could smoke on stage. I was like, but I won't look cool, which is an insane thing for an adult to say. Mm. Um, but I remember there was one time where I was doing shows in Cleveland. And I was trying to get this tape. I was desperately trying to get this tape to like submit for like Letterman or Montreal or one of these comedy things. And they taped the first show and I did great. And I was drinking, I probably had like two drinks on stage. Um, but then people started sending me shots and Ate I, those I, people. Yep, I killed, did great. Then we go to the bar next door 
to hang out with like that audience while we wait for the second show. Second show comes, I tell that audience, I was like, you know what the first audience was doing? Like you guys don't want to be a bunch of for <laughs> sending shots. Never so, mention shots. Yeah. So now the they start sending ever. shots. What I think happens is a comedy revolution. I think that I, I know I have my tape. I think I tore it apart. I call my girlfriend at the time. She's like, how to go? And I was like, I'm like the next Bill Hicks. I can lead a revolution. <laughs> we should march to the capital of Ohio or whatever. So then I keep emailing this club being like, hey, man, when can I get that tape? Like, I really need that tape. I need to submit for Montreal. I need to submit for Letterman or whatever. Like, I need that tape. And they're like, just, all right, we'll give it to you. They send me the tape. I do not. I'm not doing well. Um, you can't understand a word I'm saying. Yeah. I literally sound like I'm talking in like slow motion. And I'm like, we got a march. And I think they're laughing just because they're scared. It's like a yeah. hostage situation. <laughs> what are I we in the middle of? Maybe they're sending me shots of water just to, <laughs> but it that that was the worst. You don't even of, remember when they plugged in the IV. No, no. I have no <laughs> idea. Yeah, that was the march to, we took to the Capitol was just me going to the hospital. Um, and that's when I, I like, I, I stopped getting drunk on stage. Uh, I, I remember like I uh, when Chappelle, like Chappelle gets high on stage. And I was right. like, oh, I'm going to try that. No, no. I, I, no. There are some people who just have it and can do it. Um, I've probably had my best shows, yeah, when I've had like one or two beers and like that's it. Yeah. Um, but I also, there's something I do like about going on stage sober and kind of having like a little jitters, which I haven't had because I've been in stand-up for like 20 years um, and going into it more like a, like a fighter, you know? Um, I feel like I'm definitely like a little quicker when I do it, but I miss, I used to have like, yeah, my little whiskey and my little beer and yeah. I just kind of set it up. And like I have, that. I've got comic friends who say never drink on stage. I'll never drink on stage. At I, all. I only take water. You know, I don't drink, I'll drink after the show, but I refuse to drink. And I'm like, yeah, not me. I, I need to have yeah. a little, you know, do I need it? I don't know. I, because I like to just, cause again, it's not a nervousness. I just feel because I'll go back to what you said. I started drinking as a kid when I was in my late teens because I was insecure. Right. And I wanted to find a way to drop my inhibitions, yes. right? Like I didn't want to, like I was scared of girls. Yeah. I was scared of all these things. Like I look at you and I'm like, well, he's over there drinking coffee. That's hip. Like, ha, that's cool. That's hilarious. Like, that's yeah, progressive. Yeah. Yep. I like that. That's that's, that looks cool. I mean, he's sitting, <laughs> I mean, you're drinking it out Brooklyn. of a Blaze coffee cup. <laughs> Go to Blaze.com. grown up. <laughs> <laughs> Go to BlazeTV.com. Uh, yeah, he's drinking out of a Blaze. And I'm like, you know, I can see the steam rising. I'm like, that's cool. I wish I could I wish I could be the like, That's so yeah. funny. You want to trade? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got plenty of we time, Jamie. <laughs> oh, my God. This is the start of a beautiful friendship I know. If I wasn't going you, shooting afterwards. I know. <laughs> for the first time. Well, it's funny, too, when you talk about, uh, like, Cosby. Uh, what was so interesting is Cosby would lecture – uh, especially like the young black community mm -hmm. about respectability politics, about pulling your pants up, about like I think probably like drugs and alcohol. And it's like homeboy's like the scariest rapist like in yeah. the world where I do get, you know, sometimes I like I, I, I don't. I mean, there was a phase where I was like a sober vegan. Not fun. Um, not fun to be around. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> that I do. Give this guy a steak and a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I still have vegan tattoos. And yeah, I, tell me I, about that. Like, I who eat, gets a vegan tattoo? I do. I eat meat uh, now, and not only is it a vegan tattoo, like, it's not like a metaphor. It is animals murdering farmers. Like, there's a whole farm... And there's, I don't think you can see it's it. It's like Animal Farm it gone is. wild. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like a pig with like a revolver and it's a, a, a chicken stepping on the head of a farmer and he has like a little Rambo thing. And a cow is like uh, slitting the throat of a farmer who, by the way, I thought that farmer was like a guy and I've had like uh, trouble with the ladies in the past. And this girl the other day was like, why is the farmer slitting the throat of a woman? I was like, uh, that's not a woman. That's a guy farmer. She's like, no, I'm pretty sure that's a woman. And I was like, you cannot tell anyone. One, I have a woman being murdered on my arm. That's not going to help my image, like whatsoever. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. It's pretty. That's art. a whole farmhouse uh, killer mural you got going on there. Yeah. Apparently, there's a lot of scenes happening in that. Yeah, thing. and then uh, my first kickboxing fight. Uh, everyone had these like tough like nicknames like killer. Uh, so I just had tofu warrior as mine. So I got like a little I have like a little tofu guy with a sword. You on got my a little hand. cube of tofu on there. I mean, the tattoos are still cool, but dude, like half of my two tattoos are like. 
ex-wife and vegan tattoos. Like nothing is valid on my body anymore. Yeah. Like all of these are very out of date. Do you regret any of the tattoos? There's a reason I'm going to ask that. No, I mean, they're just like parts in your of your life. And it's yeah. not like I like stare out. This one, uh, I had a really jealous girlfriend. It took her a year to figure out that this was a wedding ring. Uh, it's a, a, and I was just too scared to tell her. Um, it's like a penguin. Yeah. Uh, Cause like penguins are monogamous and stuff. And I feel bad because I have a girlfriend now and we're very serious. And I was like, I should get it covered up, but I don't really know what to do. Part of me wants to do like a flip book of just like a bunch of penguins, like doing like different positions. <laughs> like there's I, a penguin doing monogamous doggy style. Yeah. That's, that's some <laughs> Deep you got going, Jay. <laughs> it's a weird. It's uh look. It's been a weird couple of years. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> I, I love it, dude. You just gotta embrace the individuality and the uni uniqueness of the person. That's so you you like tattoos to me are an expression of that because I've got you know a, lo a lot, and so to me it's almost like building an altar. There was this time in your life this happened, and I want to build a, a memorial yeah. stone to it. Yeah, and like this, like everything tells a story about this phase in my life some i like to talk about some i don't but it's there and um and it just kind of becomes that thing that's a cool way to put it man because i think a lot of people i think the biggest problem with i mean even everything that's going on now politically with like the fighting we do online is that people just don't have self-awareness um and they're not willing to Think critically. They they're 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 told that if you change your mind on something, you're weak or you're a flip flopper or like me. Like I posted that I was come going on like Glenn's show earlier, and like I knew this would happen, but like a bunch of my liberal followers automatically were like, "You sell out!" Like blah 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 for talking to someone with like a different opinion, right? Because I used to believe a certain thing. Now my beliefs are evolving. Evolution should be a good thing. Evolving your beliefs should be a good thing. Being open minded to hear what other people have to say is a good. thing thing and and i feel the same way with like your past right yeah. um if you're not if you're so ashamed of your past that means you're not learning from it um there are things i've done that i regret there are things i've done that i could have done better but if i just tried to like bury it all mm -hmm. uh that's when people become uh bitter when they start to project when they start to like attack other people like that's what i used to do online um as opposed to yeah it, it could be weird having like an ex-wife tattoo uh but it's not i got a buddy of mine that's been married four times he has four pinup tattoos no he doesn't of every single ex-wife and he did, did he not do it get, over he like did, one over no, the, no, the no, no, last he one didn't, no it's on different parts of his uh, arm uh, always i mean they're very visible and uh, he didn't get the tattoos until after they were divorced because he was like, I love them. I still love them. They're great. They were great human beings. We just couldn't stay married. Whoa. And so he got them and he'll name them off and he'll tell the whole thing. That's amazing. Yeah, he's a crazy Lucky mother. number five. <laughs> <laughs> he's running out of skin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd want that constant No, I know. <laughs> That's just him. That's how he is. He's a nut. Uh, but I love him. I mean, the dude's, you talk about unique. Anyway. Seeing that dude take 23 shots of Patron tequila in one night. He, he just downs it all night mm -hmm. long. Walks into, anyway, we don't need to get into all that. But <laughs> I mean, like, this guy's a pro. Um, <clears throat> love that dude. Anyway, and he's a doctor, by the way. Perfect. He's, he's one of the top, he is the top equine surgeon in the world. In the world. Let me tell you. Anyway, I've always said, my listeners, my viewers, they've heard me say this a million times. If you have a conviction and you believe in something and someone challenges you on that, because I believe critical thinking and critical thought has been lost in a big way in today's. Totally. It, and it, that's a huge deal to me. Um, this, just, just this absence of logic and the syllogistic reasoning has been lost of being able to put A and B to C. It, it's amazing to me. But if you have a conviction and someone challenges you, it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to make your conviction stronger or it's going to change your conviction and make it better. Yeah. Okay? So I like opposing ideas if, if people are thinking critically. You've kind of had an evolution of that. Yeah. I mean, you are, as our buddy uh, and good friend, and I heard from him today, by the way, Andrew Heaton calls political orphans. Like, I feel like a political orphan. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so reading what I have on you and knowing you, and following you, it just kind of seems like you find yourself in that camp right now. What's yeah. that evolution process been for you? Yeah, I mean, and it's good and it's disheartening at the same right. time. Where it's good because, so I just did uh, that, that roundtable show here, uh, The News and White News Matters. News and White Matters, right? yeah, with Sarah Gonzalez. And, and it was great. And I was the only 
liberalish person there, mm-hmm. and we started talking about uh, guns and mass shootings. And something that I would never be able to do on MSNBC when I used to go on, or I would never be able to do on CNN, instead of using that time to shout at them my thoughts on guns or what we need from regulation, uh, I was like, okay, I have at least one dude. I mean, the dude next to me was like from NRA TV. So I was like, I have at least one guy who owns a gun and knows a lot about them. Why don't I use my time instead to ask him what he thinks we should do? Mm. Because I don't know. I've never shot a gun uh, before. I've never owned a gun. My family's never owned a gun. Uh, I didn't grow up in the South. I didn't grow up where that was part of my culture. And I am much more interested, instead of the left on Twitter, just assuming that anyone who owns a gun is like pro mass shooting. Like that's an insane thing to believe. Um, But it is what we assumed on the left. And so I asked them, I was like, what are your solutions? And I think that when you can put aside partisanship and you can go, Hey, if we both want the same thing, Mm -hmm. right? If I was a gun owner, I would be even louder about gun control. um, Because I was like, I don't want every time there be a mass shooting for people like me who have a gun for either sport or to protect my family or whatever, we get lumped in with these psychopaths, right? So I want to hear what someone who is trained how to use a firearm, what they think we should do. Um, That kind of dialogue is shunned on the left. Like I said, when I posted I was coming here, people automatically were like, oh, so you're finally selling out to the right. It's like, no, idiots. Like, I want to share my ideas with them and I want to hear their ideas and then I want to come up with whatever like the best solution is but you are not encouraged to do that like dude if when I left I've said this before but if when I like left that radical left side of me if I wrote the book which by the way I was offered um and I had I went from having a lot of money to having no money that's a fun experience right there holy (laughs) but and I, I remember sitting on a couch and I was literally, this is the most liberal thing you ever hear, holding my cat and crying because uh, I'm like, I'm not even gonna be able to take care of my cat. And I was getting these offers to kind of be like, I'll sell you. Uh, I was getting these offers to be. I'm going to have to eat you, but I love you. But I love you so much. Uh, I used just, to be a vegan. Don't look at the vegan tattoos. Um, I I had to, if I like wrote the book, uh, that if I was like, why I left the left and the right was right, I would get a check for like a billion dollars. I'm sure you would. I would have my own spot on. Fox Holy News. And there's a trajectory for that. There yeah. are people who have gone down that path. And I tried, man. I was like, all right, I'll watch some Ben Shapiro videos. And I was like, ah, so liberal. Uh, but like, I tried to do that. Uh, and I couldn't if do I it. If I had to just sit there on a diet of Ben Shapiro videos, I probably would go liberal too. You're at the next like Antifa rally, like throwing milkshakes. Uh, like Mike Mike Knowles, you've been on Mike Knowles' deal. Him. I love Mike Knowles. He was Mike the Knowles. first right wing show Mike, I ever Mike's did. Mike's a great dude, man, and dude, I love and that guy. He was the first like Republican I met, and yeah. literally I remember saying backstage to him, I was like, "You guys are funny." Like, yeah. Idea. Mike Knowles is great, dude. Love that guy. He's the best. He was the best. He like welcomed me like into. I wrote this whole piece after I went on his show, being like, "Shut!" Like I went in there. First of all, his producer at the time, who was also amazing, was like a Latina woman. And I wrote that I was like, I just thought it was all going to be like white guys. And I was like, I wrote that I was like looking to see if she was like blinking some kind of Morris code. Like, get me out. I've been held hostage. <laughs> then, uh, then there's a, a a woman when Michael's talking to me was like a fan uh, made you something. A fan made you a present. And I was like, oh, here we go. It's going to be like a bullet from the Parkland massacre <laughs> or like some swastika and it was like an oil painting of his wedding night it was like the most beautiful thing ever then there was a curtain behind me in the dressing room and this other woman was like breastfeeding her kid and i was like ah you guys are all like believe in family and (laughs) you really are pro family really kind it was the most (laughs) insane thing i've like ever been a part of and uh i don't know where i was going with that now you were talking about shapiro and like like you're still a liberal because you're watching that and you're like what do i do and i'll tell you it's harder I know I've talked to friends that the way to get those Patreon numbers up, the way to get more people to listen to the podcast right away at first yeah. is to attack again mm-hmm. and is to be, cause that's all I did on the left. And we were making, well, I was f- it. we were making like $13,000 a month with no advertising mm-hmm. just from volunteer donors. Um, because we had a tribe and we were rallying the tribe online and I would start with conservatives every day online. And by the way, I was doing this because I was massively depressed uh, and I was in a relationship that wasn't working and I would get my validation uh, by going on the internet and starting 
been seen if a celebrity retweeted me. Yeah. Um, and you were addicted to Twitter, weren't you? A hundred percent. Yeah. And I, because I wasn't getting validation in my real life, yeah. right? But you can carry that around. And like these people you like, they're, they're liking you. They're telling you like you're fighting the good mm -hmm. fight and all this stuff. And I, 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 I said this before on Glenn's show where I wasn't even being a good person. Like I would literally, if my girlfriend was like, hey, Jamie, your mom's on the phone. I'd be like, tell her I can't talk. I'm tweeting about feminism. Like I was ignoring <laughs> real women in my life to project this image of like this self-righteous guy. And it wasn't nefarious. It wasn't uh, premeditated. I thought I was doing the right thing and I didn't have the self-awareness to realize that I was doing it for like the wrong reasons. What you right? just said is genius. I mean, that that whole little thing right there you just said is genius. Well, I mean, it's just People like, need to stop, rewind three minutes and listen to what he said again. Rewind. It's, it's it. raw and it's real and thank you yeah. for that's, admitting that. Good. That's amazing. Thank you guys. But it's I mean, good. it's, it's, but it's a hundred percent true. And I think a lot of people go through that. Mm -hmm. um, you see it on Twitter, you know, it's like, wow, we are fighting all day with strangers and like, dude, I still don't, we, I don't know if we'll agree or disagree on more things, but we'll talk about it and we won't get mad at each other. Exactly. And like, we just met. Um, and that's a, crazy thing that i think a lot of people forget because remember it's facebook it's twitter they profit off engagement they yeah. profit off us fighting um there's no incentive for them to be like hey cool it down guys um but then once you leave and once you log off and once you go on the internet you go hey the majority of people are decent yeah. and isn't that good isn't that a good thing but liberals a lot of times want to be like no everything's terrible and everyone's a nazi and it's like that's a horrible world to live in yeah. um and what i've noticed is ever since talking to conservatives is that like this happened the other day uh, our friend uh, jason uh posted something after the el paso shooting and he goes something has to change um whether it's with gun laws whether it's whatever um jason who i'm going shooting with today <laughs> who's a good person by jason buttrell Chief research for Blaze TV. By the way, great former Marine. Oh, amazing! He's been great. in war, so he's a, know. He, he knows how to shoot. This guy. I didn't even yeah. ask any questions. I'm like, yeah. let's go shoot some guns. <laughs> let's go. And uh, you, you look like okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's fine, right? Um, this is like an actual range, and we're not just like picking off like your enemies. You don't have like a. We're not going to be list, downtown. Right? Great. Um, so so I, uh, so I retweeted him. And I was like, hey, I'm someone on the left who also wants mm -hmm. to do something. Um, we should talk about this. And I was so bummed out where all the conservatives that wrote to me or that responded were like, yeah, enough's enough. Like so many kids are dying. We have to do something. Again, something that I would have never assumed would come from conservatives. Uh, no offense. Um, and all the liberals were like, well, then why does this guy work for the blaze? Like, did he vote for Trump? And it's like, Jesus, man, you have what you want. Yeah. You have a conservative gun owner being like. We have to change stuff. Don't you want to hear what he wants to change? Like, look, politicians on both sides are assholes. Po like, you want to talk about politicians? Okay. Maybe politicians aren't going to make changes because they're getting money uh, from the NRA. But the majority of people, who I believe, who are in the NRA, maybe not the higher-ups, but who are in the NRA, of course they want uh, people— to they want sensible people who are trained yeah. to have guns and they don't want mass shootings but like the way the internet is especially on the left if you talk to someone on the right you know again i'll be called alt right for doing these shows rogan who is very liberal has been called alt right for talking to uh, uh conservatives for talking to ben shapiro yeah um and that's insane that's just going to keep us divided forever yeah no that's you're exactly right and you bring up a good point you take a guy like Rogan. I mean, you know, whatever. What it, Nancy Pelosi was being called a racist by AOC a couple of weeks ago oh, for right. something, and I'm like, come on, quit devouring each other. This is this is a circular firing squad at this point. You know, you you mentioned Harvey Weinstein. I mean, Harvey Weinstein is is a is a creep, and he's out there sexually abusing and harassing and raping women. I mean, I I like sex. I like sex too, but that doesn't make I make me a creepy raper right. kind of guy either. You know what I'm saying? And it's the same thing with guns. Like, okay, there are people out there who misuse guns, but just because you're a gun owner doesn't mean that you're a potential mass shooter. Right. Yeah. Like if someone like I've been doing jujitsu for like twelve years, and if someone was like running around Dallas rear naked choking everyone, I wouldn't be like, well, I guess I gotta hang up, <laughs> hang up the old gi. Like, this is I, my guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's an insane thing. But and also what the left does is by by not. Okay, so like Harvey Weinstein's a great example. When Matt Damon 
said that we sh- shouldn't compare uh, Al Franken to Harvey Weinstein, mm-hmm. which I agree with. Um, I agree with that. What Al Franken did is very different than I completely Harvey agree. Weinstein. It's like, you know, uh, yeah. Harvey Weinstein, who was like, was a serial predator. Um, Matt Damon said, uh, we shouldn't compare those two things. Uh, aren't they different? Whatever. The next day, Matt Damon is trending on Twitter like he's a rapist, mm-hmm. where he's being called a rape apologist, all this stuff. If we can't have that conversation, like, I'm not even in the tribe of people that's like, you know, false accusations make it harder for guys. Like, put guys aside, right? Like I still have an easier gig than like the majority of women. Uh, if you are conflating one night stands with rape, if you are comparing Al Franken to Harvey Weinstein, this makes it worse for women as well, right. because now you have all these guys when there's a legitimate accu- accusation, they're going to be like, Oh, what is it like an Aziz thing? Well, well okay. I was going to bring that up the same. I'm going to bring that up because you take the Aziz on sorry thing that where the girl comes out and it's like, he's doing all this. Now, first of all, Aziz, if, if all this stuff's true, he's a weird, lover like he's a weird weird lover okay? the game should be finessed yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. i mean if you he did if you read that account he was doing some weird crap yeah. okay and like mm, i just don't i don't quite understand where he was going with that but this girl knew what she was getting into i mean if you're gonna go out you're gonna have dinner or whatever then you're gonna come back up to my apartment like if somebody we have this saying that uh, my wife would say it too if someone says why don't you come back up to my room yeah that is saying, let's go have sex. Sure. We're trying to get you into a position where you can do that. So the thing that happened with Aziz was unfortunate because he didn't, in my opinion, do anything necessarily wrong. Mm. It was just a date, and that's where it went. He was trying to— I wouldn't have done it that way. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not putting my fingers in no, some girl's mouth and spreading them out. Yeah, and well, to... I mean, what was happening was—so like, it I mean, sounded might... like she pursued him. Um, yeah. They went out. Um, I mean, look, the bottom line is if there's if you're having sex with a woman and she's like, stop, like you stop. Right. Stop. Yeah. Um, but with the Aziz thing, they kept kind of stop starting like she was going down on him. Then uh, she was like, stop. So then he stopped. Then they started hooking up again. Then he eventually like called her an Uber uh, or something like that. And that yeah. was and that was it. Um what it sounded like was he has his little, like, routine, his little factory. Like, we go to the sushi place that's across from my apartment. We go to the apartment. We have sex. Yeah. Um, she changed her mind. I mean, She's allowed to change her mind. He is allowed to make a move. He's uh, allowed to go as far as he can go. Yeah, and then stop. It's really f- But when we turn that into he's a rapist, he should never work again— I mean, that's insulting to women who were raped, in my opinion. Um, and that's pushing uh, me too into just like ridiculous. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. we should be going after rapists. We should be going after people who, you know, uh, like if someone's like, you're going to get fired if you don't f- me. Like, that's all harassment. Like, that's all stuff. But like, yeah, Al Franken doing this, Aziz uh, hooking up. Uh, th- these aren't in I the same did category. A, I did a video a commentary. Um, I don't know, God, whenever the Matt Lauer stuff went out and he lost his job. Oh, right, right, right. right. And so I did a deal, and it was a, it was a joke. I did this three-minute rant about if Matt Lauer had tried that with my mother, right? what would have happened to him? Great. Because she would have, you know, he'd have been trying to get out of that locked room, and she would have been dragging him back in by his ankles. I regret there the have button. Been claw- I regret the button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you hit the button, get my ass out of here. <laughs> Well, you know, and people, everybody was like, oh, you're making light of this thing. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm just saying, I'm calling this what it is. I mean, you first you have women who succumb to this, but also many of them, like in the Weinstein, Weinstein situation, they did it because they knew they were getting career advancement on this yeah. thing. And so, you know, we, we tend to look at this thing and like, well, most real women, strong Women would not put up with that garbage. Right. Like they would, they would fight back, and that was the point of the, the, the rant. And so, <clears throat> but it's amazing how many people come out and they're like, you know, how can you make light of this? Blah 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 blah. And I'm like, well, you know, we've been around for however many millennia. Men are attracted to women. Women are attracted to men. Men tend to be the pursuers. Women tend to be the receivers. Mm. I don't need to get into a whole birds and bees thing, but that's kind of the nature of how we are. We have a sex drive. 
to through, side up through through. <laughs> the I, mean, great, great. I mean, look, thank God the Blaze doesn't have an HR. I'm an HR nightmare, <laughs> right? I mean, I got my girls. I mean, they're like sisters to me. Ashley and I, we've been many revolutions around the sun together. Hot news, Natalie, that's normally in here uh, for our headline shows. Uh, Candice, she has to listen to all kind of garbage out of me and Party Foul Steve. And you were just it, hearing hot news, Natalie. Hot I was news, like, oh, Natalie. I don't know if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, she's a former <laughs> Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, right? And she's she's normally on our on our you know uh, Monday episodes talking about the news <laughs> and topics. Hot news, Natalie. And and I'm like, look, you know, Sarah Gonzalez, you were just on her show. Yeah. We joke around a ton. And it's like, look, these people who are confident in who they are, and because I don't believe in toxic masculinity. Like, it, you're either toxic or you're masculine. Otherwise, like it's, it's an oxymoron. When you're done with this, I have a thought on that. I yeah, ask you. And, so, and, that, and I'll end that, but just saying, people who are confident in who they are, in their masculinity, in their, it, you don't get so, you know, easily butthurt yeah. over these kind of things. Like, if I'm flirting with you or joking with you, like, you take the Al Franken thing when he's got his hands over her, you know, she's wearing like the she, Kevlar. Good God, she's wearing <laughs> body armor, and he's like, ah, oh my God, yeah. I'd lose every job, every position I've ever had in my life. I'm, I'm, it's party time, mom. Look, mom, I've done some weird, <laughs> okay, and I apologize, sort of, not really, but <laughs> I mean, I did lose my job for you lost your for, job for less. Hang than on that. a second, keep talking, keep talking, Jamie. Yeah, I got, yeah. I got. You're not drinking, but by God, we're getting into it. Are you doing another one? <laughs> yeah, I'm doing another one. I'm just gonna, I'm just I, w- I, w- I, w- I would do one with you. I know you would. Okay. Oh, look at you being a good I think friend. I want some JMO in his coffee cup. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're going to dinner later, so who knows what could happen. Oh, right, 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 right. <laughs> no, yeah, with, with no cameras. I'm not going to be the guy. No, no, no. I'll do it on my own first. Um, yeah, it's... <sighs> you know what's crazy? The, the people I've actually heard the most from, probably about like... What happened with me? So you let's go back. So Jezebel pushed a story out. Yeah. So it with I mean, an accusation. You tell me how much detail because I think I went into like you, you all go of into it whatever with you Glenn. Want. Yeah. But like the gist was my people don't watch Glenn Beck. They don't. They don't even like him. Oh great. Um. The the gist was <laughs> I was uh I was in a marriage. That marriage had turned into a friendship. My mistake that I made. My legit mistake um, was after like years in this relationship, like I finally uh, I caved and I cheated and I had this like affair and I felt horrible. I was like suicidal. I kept trying to get out of the affair. The girl at one point was like, one day I'm going to write a book about this. And I'm like, ah, I'm not famous enough for that. So it's fine. Um, and it was hard and horrible. And I felt like a piece. Of um, I finally end it. And I'm like, I would rather go back to being in like some like loveless marriage uh and i'm like i'll never have sex i don't care i would rather that than like the guilt of of this i felt horrible um so years go by i don't talk to this girl anymore um my ex and i my ex-wife and i almost break up and then as a kind of like last ditch effort she was like what if we tried like an open relationship so i say yes and it's gonna be like don't ask don't tell which, uh, not easy to get when someone's like, hey, are you in a relationship? And you're like, I'm in a secret open relationship. Because you sound like a liar and that you definitely yeah, have herpes, they ask right? They're like, do you have an open relationship? No, I, I just cheat. I just cheat. Yeah, th- <laughs> I, I, that would have been easier. Um, but I still, because it's don't ask, don't tell, I'm still sneaking around. And mm-hmm. I can still only really like hook up on the road. And I still feel like I'm cheating. And so I'm like, this sucks. I don't want to do this. Um and we decide to talk about it on the show. I'm like, maybe if at least I'm open about being in an open relationship, I won't feel like I'm like lurking in the bushes to try to like have sex. So we say it on the show and dude, like I said this on Rogan's where I spent years being like, hashtag believe all women, hashtag believe all women. Suddenly I read what's being said about me and I'm like, hashtag don't believe all women. Like this is (laughs) terrible. If a woman or if a guy who was accused of something was like, yo, she was just like a crazy jealous ex. I'm like, that's sexist. And then people will be like, what happened to you? And I'm like, well, it was a crazy jealous ex where what happened was the day after or the week of that uh, I announced I was in an open relationship, this girl I had with the affair with years ago posted on a message board like has any other girl been wronged by feminist jamie kilstein 
Wow. And out of the like hundreds of girls I've slept with, um, God, I hope my uh, girlfriend's parents aren't listening to this. Um, they're great. They're conservative. I love them so much. Um, but out of the many girls I slept with, uh, one girl was like, he was flirting with me online. Didn't send a d pic. Never sent anything like that. Uh, she told me she had a boyfriend. And I go, oh, sorry. That was it. And a conversation. And some other girl said, uh, we hooked up. We didn't sleep together. Jezebel made it sound like we slept together. And Jezebel didn't make it. Uh, they didn't mention the open relationship, so it sounded like I was just cheating, cheating, cheating. Um, the girl said uh, it was the safest I ever felt with a man or something like that. Or it was the first time I trusted a man, which meant when we were hooking up, I was respectful. We were great. Um, and then she goes, but weeks later, uh, he called me a ro on his podcast. And then Jezebel, in parentheses, said Jezebel could not find that quote. And it's like, great, you couldn't find that quote because I'm not talking about road on my feminist podcast that I host with my mean wife you know what i mean that's insane uh but even if i did say that that does not make me an abuser or a predator that makes me an asshole i've never been so turned on by a man in my life yes I just got to... <laughs> let's drink let's i'm just kidding that's some serious <laughs> that's some serious word salad right there i love it dude. so that was it's it beautiful but that was and look it was because i was a self-righteous asshole nothing i was like quote unquote accused of our, fa our favorite comics haven't talked about on stage. You know what I mean? Like sleeping around oh, yeah, on sure. the road, uh, flirting online. Like this is normal stuff. But because I was in a group of people that the second someone said something sexist or the second someone was getting canceled, I would jump on them. Mm -hmm. I was such a fun story to be like, ha ha, f that guy. Like yeah. I didn't really have friends on either side because the left, once they're told someone's canceled, Lost all my fans, lost all my friends. I mean, my friends didn't even call to make sure I didn't kill myself. Like, Rogan, Stan Hope, and some comics did. And we weren't even friends at that point. Like, they, we didn't like each other. Uh, they wrote to see if I was okay. But all my, like, journalist friends, the ones I got on MSNBC, the ones... I mean, not that that would matter if I really was a piece of shit or if I, like, assaulted someone. But the people who were only there when they needed something... I mean, no one was even like, yo, are you alive? Or like, is that stuff true? Or uh, or anything like that. They kind of got their progressive marching orders. They're mm -hmm. like, this dude's gone. Um, and that was it. And that's another reason, going back to what we were saying before, why it would be really easy to go, yeah, like full conservative or like women. Um, and I just, be, because not only would that be money and would that financially probably get the podcast more attention and stuff like that, but it also, you know, th there is that part of you that's like, you could get bitter. You could yeah. go that way. Like I've met guys who have been turned on by the left and like, now they just hate women. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I'm not that guy at all. I would rather take the kind of slow road and meet just cool people who I like um, as opposed to going just the like, you know, complete like woman hater, like be lying. It's like, no, nah, a thing happened to me and a thing happens to a lot of women. Yeah. Um, you know, it is what it is. You have kind of come through this and we started here and I want to, I want to end here. You, you, you kind of came through this evolution politically and I, I like you sent me a message on Twitter. You know, we were talking on a private message and you yeah. said somebody told me that me and you probably get along. And I was like, yeah, I bet we would. Yeah. And, Ricky. And we have. So, yeah. you know, I, I love it. So um, new friend. And, and I'm serious, dude. I appreciate this talk. I could do this for hours. Yeah, me too, man. Because it's real. And, and so and a lot of people are afraid of real. You know yeah. what I mean? They're yeah. afraid. Like, like when you shine the light in the dark place it gets very uncomfortable sometimes. Yeah. Comedy is supposed to do that, actually. You know, I believe that, like, you know, these days comedy, I said we were going to end on this. I'm going to go to another route for a yeah, second, yeah, and we'll yeah. get back to that. Comedy has gotten to a point where I think that people have not been had any oppression or persecution or hard times, and therefore they, they want to be identified by their persecution, so they go out and create something yeah. in order to make themselves victim, and sure. so now that's how they identify themselves. And then when you get on stage and you say something about whatever, you know, I got accused this week of fat shaming, and I was like, well, he's fat. I mean, I, wasn't, I just said he just needs to lay off the free pizza. <laughs> and so I didn't call him fat. He just needs to lay off. You're the one who knew he was fat. You, you know what I was talking about. <laughs> he could have been skinny fat. He was, and eating, he was pizza. eating pizza. I mean, you know, I'm fat, but I identify as skinny. I'm trans fat. So <laughs> whatever you want to call it, but that's the deal. And I, that's why, again, I, I don't apologize. But these days, people are so, um, you know, when you get into 
comedy, it's supposed to shine a light in the uncomfortable places. That's yeah. what it does. George Carlin was a master of that. It's the best. You know? When I, uh, whenever I would do interviews, um, you know, and George's daughter gave me my first TV spot. Wow. And, you know, these were comics I, I really looked up to. I mean, half the comics we looked up to, like Richard Pryor would not be able to be Richard Pryor. Carl, like, who knows I know. um, how many of them would be canceled or whatever. We're for about being... to find out because they just paid $60 Eddie million dollars oh, to Eddie that. Murphy. Dude, I rewatched his special and I was like, oh, it wasn't even a gay joke. He literally opens his special by being like, I hate I like, hate faggots, I know. I mean, hey, gonna... Mooley, you know, give me some popcorn. Oh, I mean, my God. this whole thing. And, and I'm like, I just... Unless Eddie Murphy has become a brand new comic yeah. in the last 20 years. Unless he years. walks out holding hands with his boyfriend. I'm not <laughs> sure how this is going to fly. But like, but how do you do that comedy? I mean, Chappelle got himself. You mentioned him earlier. He got himself a storm earlier. Yeah. For years. And then he comes back and, and does what? the play. He's doing stadiums. Yeah. Like yeah. he doesn't give a shit. And his last two specials were so edgy, and he'll go after They're Trump, great. but he'll go after me too. He'll, yeah. I mean, and they just announced his new special coming out. I mean, he's so prolific. Um, I mean, he's our he's our guy, right? He's our Carlin. He's sure. our um, and the the left hates him. I mean, the left liked him when he was on their side, and and and, and that's what he's comics honest. should do. Yeah, is he's they, honest. Is they, is they they shouldn't always fall down party lines. And you know, to me, I used to do interviews, and people would be like. Uh, so were you like the class clown? I was like, are you out of your mind? The class clown beat the shit out of me and called me gay. Like the class clown, no way. Like I was the sad kid writing in a notebook. Uh, I wasn't the class clown. Comedy comes from pain. So like my first memories of making jokes were if like my mom relapsed and me and my brothers would be like standing around upstairs, like and she'd be getting carted off like on like Christmas in an ambulance and one of us would make a joke. And, and it would always be offensive because it was a horrible situation. And whenever that first person made the joke, the tension was gone, the ice was broken, and now it was like, all right, now let's figure out what to do. You can still do that with comedy. Comedy can still be used yeah. to uncover uh, and, and discuss these really painful, hard things and then have a dialogue about it. Um, but now it's being so policed, and I used to do it. I used to be part of the police. Um, but it's been so policed, people are afraid to do that. And like, I'm not going to make a Trump joke, not because I like Trump, but because it's hacky. Like, good comedy should yeah. be finding, like, what's the angle no one's talking about, you exactly. know? And that's what makes it so uh, exciting. And yeah, you should be able to talk about things. And you know what, dude? When you actually go to a club, not one of these shows in LA, but like a club where it's actually working class people, there are minorities in the audience, there are women, you'll hear edgy stuff yeah. that would get someone canceled on Twitter, and Big the audience is City. howling. Big time in New York yeah. City. Yeah. Because no. I think we're starved for real. I yeah. think we're starved for the truth and the real. And I, if it is funny, great. Yeah. I go on stage. Like, I have a dark sense of humor. I mean, I got blasted yesterday because I posted on Twitter. I said, imagine how many pageant moms would have been murdered if Chelsea was pretty enough to enter the contest. Holy <laughs> shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, everybody's like, I just lost respect for you. Why are you calling her? Well, she's ugly. I mean, she's not a pretty woman. <laughs> She's not a pageant contestant, right? So whatever. That's just where my dark mind goes. You the know? joke was so layered for a 200-character tweet. I was like, oh, there's so <laughs> many reasons you could be mad. I was like, there are so many layers to that. I know. And, and then I was, then I, you know, the other day I did a deal that got, I don't know, God, if, you're, if we're counting reactions, like 65,000 reactions on Twitter where I said, and I've seen it copied a million times now where I said, you know, if, if you were surprised by Jeffrey Epstein's suicide, just think how surprised he was. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I you see those things, and and I'm like, and people are like, I can't believe. Then I did a video about Jeffrey Epstein, a, a little 30 second video where I said uh, he died of autoerotic asphyxiation, and I said he literally beat himself to death. <laughs> and so people were like, I can't believe you're making fun of this guy who committed suicide. I'm like, yeah, but did he? We don't know. Yeah, I mean, the guy so, who raped a bunch of women that got murdered. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. like, I mean, like, I don't. I, 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 I don't care. Right, coming together on that. Like, I yeah. love. Like, that. we we finally found our 9 11. Oh, yes, that's what it Jeff is. Epstein. Yes, yes. We're like liberals. Are like, it's like, I'm pro life. I'm pro choice. Like, I'm anti war. I'm pro war. And then everyone's like, yo, but Homeboy definitely got <laughs> murdered, right? Like, 100%. I don't know who murdered him, but someone did. Uh, yeah, man. I just want to get back to that place. I feel like when I started comedy, I, I had that attitude that you had. And now, like, it's tough. I Like, I'll totally be honest, where. I 
I I I I I find myself self censoring a lot mm -hmm. of times, either with tweets or with, and I'm getting better, probably because I'm going on more shows like this. Um, but it's you know if I do like a more right wing show. I'll like hesitate before like posting like something a little more liberal that day right. or um, or I'll still if I have like a funny joke, but there's an offensive word. The old part of me is like, oh, I still probably shouldn't say that. Another thing I say is like with malice or whatever, um, but it's still there. And I, I realized that going back to the Cosby thing, who always lectured people about respectability, that a lot of the people I've met who have the most offensive jokes or the most edgy are good people yeah. um and 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 a lot of the people who act puritanical online are full um and they it's just true. don't want to examine 100%. that's themselves. true i'm telling you people don't realize that but that's true yeah you know i and i'm with you i don't like the kitschy kind of stuff like i i people come to my show and they know i'm a conservative leaning guy um i'm i'm pretty socially liberal i, oh, cool. I you know i always have been yeah. I, i'm more fiscally conservative i believe in a smaller government but i also call out the conservatives because we hadn't conserved Right. Like, like the government just keeps expanding, expanding, expanding. It, yeah. It's just ridiculous how it's gotten. I mean, we're, what, two more trillion dollars into this whole thing since Trump's been in office, and that pisses me off. So I call out Trump as much. as and people get mad at me for doing that. I'm like, yeah, okay, so I voted for the guy. In 2016, I didn't really want that to be the guy I had to vote for. But it was like I went in the voting booth, and I was like, okay, there was a box that said Hillary Clinton, and then there was not Hillary Clinton. So I went with not Hillary Clinton. <laughs> yeah, 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 that yeah. was kind of the route I went. We wound up with a you know a washed-up reality TV show guy and and you know numbers wise has he done well should he shut up yes um he's not a diplomat he doesn't want to be a diplomat we elected a billionaire mogul real estate playboy yep. that is used to living in rarefied air that we can't relate to and he's just going to say whatever pops off in his head which by the way shows how broken the system is on right. the left and the right that people are just like it like vote for trump you know what i mean like we the the he w so much of what he said about hillary clinton was right yeah. you know i was like a bernie guy but like the goldman sachs stuff was right draining the swamp was right now is he being hypocritical yeah, yeah. um but like people were thirsty for that and because the mainstream does such a good job of trying to keep uh uh radical voices out whether it's someone like you know, they learned their lesson with Ross Perot, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why you'll never see, like, Ralph Nader on CNN and, you know, why Ron Paul got buried and stuff like that. Um, so then people are just so desperate where they don't. Clinton and Jeb, I mean, it was literally like a Clinton and a Bush again. And it's like, yeah, that's why, that's one of the reasons Trump won. And the left has just become, like, well, a bunch of Well, it's the forgotten lunatics. man. It's the invisible forgotten man that feels like they've been left out, you know, they've been left out by the system yeah. and just kind of their, their flyover. And, you know, I look, when Ross Perot died a couple of weeks ago, I went on, I was on this show and I said, I, looking back now, like I almost wish in 92, I would have voted for Ross Perot. Dude, I mean, it was kind of bald already did. He was like, oh, you're not going to give me TV time? I'm going to buy it. <laughs> and then he just bought himself TV time. That's I mean, insane. I mean, he was this tall, but he was a baller, dude. dude. Just and let a me tell gangster. you. Ross Perot, and it was a good man. He like right? had charts and stuff. Yeah, he was just this like, you know, dorky and he gets gangster. the admiral to run it as as his vice, as his VP, and he's on the debate. And he's like, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Yeah, right. And and everybody jumped on him, and I'm like, No, I get this. What the guy's saying. Yeah. So anyway, I I think that this is the frustrating thing for me. Like comedy, and again, I I make fun of the right as much as I make fun of the left yeah, when I'm same. on stage. If I'm going to go there, I have people all the time who come to my show and they say, "We wanted you to be more political." Well, I want to be funny. Yeah. Like like if it's funny, then it's we'll do it. Also, but if what it's that not, means is I wanted to hear what, what I believe. What I believe. Said I want you in a to more say clever it. way into my face. Exactly. Like I've got bits about you know God I've, Donald Trump sitting on the toilet at three a.m. tweeting. I've got yeah. bits about Donald Trump's dog. He doesn't have a dog. You know what if Donald Trump drank, drank alcohol? Like these are yeah. things. Like I want to go in here and I was like, what ifs? Yeah. You know the the whole and it, so I do this kind of make believe land. And to me that's funny because it's just it's just so far fetched. But we're living in a far fetched world. Yeah, this could be a this might might just be for you. Maybe your listeners will relate to this. But so when I was like. Kind of like at the height of, uh, I call it the year I was almost famous before everything came crashing down. Um, it's so funny because when I used to do like TV shows and stuff, my introductions were always like, you've seen this guy on Conan, you've blah, blah, blah. And now my introductions are like much more somber. They're like, he's very brave for speaking his story. And I'm like, <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I, so when I, so at like the height of like, everyone was like, this guy's the next Carlin, the next Hicks. And I was just like all political. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I was with Janine Garofalo, like darling of the left, uh, as political as you can get. And I was telling her about my my dad. Me and my dad have a great relationship now. We had a horrible relationship growing up. And for the longest time, I thought it was all his fault because I was an angsty, artsy kid, right? When in reality, like thinking back on it, I'm like, oh, it was all my fault. Like I was a 16-year-old who was like, hey, dad, I want to like do comedy. And he was like, what if that falls through? You need a backup plan. And I was like, I play in a band. Like that was like my backup (laughs) plan. And I was just stoned all the time. And it'd come home from like working all day and his two-hour commute and his house would be filled with pot smoke. Like I was a piece of shit. Right. Um, so I, I, I tried to like buy him. There's this whole bit about it I used to do, but I was like, I want to make it up to him. Long story short, I, tr- I want to buy him this like birthday present, this like olive branch. Um, I go to buy him this thing. They think I'm shoplifting it. I get arrested trying to prove I'm like a better man. It was this ridiculous story. So I tell Garofalo this story and it ends with me and my dad coming together and fixing our relationship. And I tell Garofalo this story and she goes, dude, you have to talk about that on stage. And I literally was so brainwashed at that time where I go, but it's not political. I have to be political. And she's like, what are you f-ing talking about? She's like, it's funny. Like, tell it on stage. And that story, it was this 15-minute story in the middle of my set, is what started my friendship with Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. That story is what I still have gotten the most emails about. Um, I had a guy in San Francisco once give me $50 at the merch table. And I'm like, what's this for? And he's like, you brought me and my son back together. Um It's interesting because I do think now people want, I think people want to hear politics because they want to hear that they're right. But I also think a lot of people don't. I'm talking about relationships and depression for the first time in my life on stage. And these are things that like really matter to me. And in a weird way, like I almost see that as like a political act where I'm like, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to do easy Trump jokes. I'm not going to do easy Clinton jokes. Like I'm going to talk about stuff that I'm thinking about. I'm going to talk about things that I'm working on. But like. I don't think that's a bad thing, like just wanting to be funny, especially because people are going through enough every day um, that I think like, like I had a certain interview with Jim Gaffigan this morning and he's like not political. And then he was like, I think he was saying like, he thought about like, should I be? And he's like, no, people just want to like have a good time and just like laugh and like making someone laugh when things are so hard and divided right now is kind of a rebellious act, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree with you. And that's why I try to shy away from a lot of it. I, I can do it, but but it's like, okay, if I'm going into this thing and the preconceived thing is, okay, I want you to do political things, then we'll do political stuff. Sure. There's a lot of that. But if you want to just talk about life, look, I got a, I got a wife and five kids. Yeah. And, you know, I, 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 there's a lot going on in yeah, my man. world that I can make fun of. And people want to relate girlfriends. and they want to, yeah. <laughs> like, it's cathartic to them. And, like, I mean, comedy was getting to a point on the left where like someone would be like racism is bad. And everyone's like, it's like, well, yeah, we know racism is bad, <laughs> yeah. but like, where's like the joke? Like, where's, how, how do you hook me in and think you're about to say something racist and then you like spin it or, or whatever. Yeah. And it just got to a point where, yeah, they call it like clapter. clapter uh, yeah. And I was doing that too. I was totally doing that when it was just liberals coming to see me. I was like, wow, a lot of people love vegan jokes. It's like, no, my audience that I like cultivated, they like that. Yeah. If I can make a vegan joke that's good enough that I can tell it in the Midwest to a bunch of conservatives, now that's a killer joke. Maybe now I want to do that. Cattle farmers. Right? Cattle like, ranchers. Yeah. Like maybe now that I have like a more mixed audience, like, okay, cool. Maybe there, maybe that would actually be edgy or that would actually be a challenge. Um, I think comedy can be so powerful and it can be so cathartic and it can be so healing. And for some reason it has become like public enemy number one of the left and everyone is ostracized and you know from sarah silverman to kevin hart um i mean the kevin hart thing they had to dig 10 years for a successful young black man to find a problematic tweet and then take away him hosting the oscars like it's like it's not like he was like uh hey i'm hosting the oscars tomorrow i hope there aren't any gay people there then it's like all right let's let's reel it in but you had to dig that's how desperate people are to be miserable it's like you went online to find something 10 years old instead of like you could have been why aren't you doing something for like a Gay charity. Why yeah. aren't you? You know what I mean. But we just want to bury people nowadays. <laughs> I said I I've referred. I've referred to that on stage before, and I'm like, "Here's Kevin." I'm like, first of all, don't apologize, okay? Because you didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. You, know, you just make you. It's in the as Ro, I've heard Rogan say it. It's, mocking people is in the job description. 
Right. It's what we do. So and people love it when they're mocking it, the right guy. Exactly. As long as you're mocking the person not like you, then that's great. And so I said, and then he's going to go on Ellen and apologize. Like somebody made Ellen the gay pope. Right. Like she can resolve, <laughs> re- absolve all the sins. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm they do the weird stuff. dance instead of this at the end. <laughs> and like, dances you were, down the aisle yeah, yeah, and your yeah. sins just fall off. Yeah, right, you're forgiven. Yeah. And so I was looking at that. And then uh, uh, who was who was the other one that you talked about before, Kevin? You said Sarah. Uh, Sarah just uh, got Sarah the blackface Silverman, like the blackface yeah. thing. Like, no, she shouldn't lose a gig over doing the blackface no. thing. Everybody's at some point in time done something like if that. If she like walked into the new gig today in full blackface and was like, ha ha, because black people are exactly. different. And then it would be like, what the hell's wrong with Sarah Silverman? But yeah, she was making, I'm pretty sure it was like an anti-racist yeah. bit um, using that. And again, years ago, but now the industry is so scared, which is why independent shows and podcasts are so important nowadays. Um, because I think, I think that the industry is going to go overboard. Um, it's a pendulum swing. Yeah. It's going to go so far as can't help but come back. Yeah. You, you look at Silver, Sarah Silverman, and I'm like, okay, ask yourself an honest question. You see that picture. Now, do you believe, do you truly believe Sarah Silverman hates black people? Of course not. No. Of course not. No. So, so obviously, it was a joke. It was a bit. And by the way, sketch. I saw more conservatives defending her than I did liberals. Yeah. I was quiet on the left, and I saw conservatives being like, and Sarah's very, very liberal. Like, I've opened she's for very, Sarah. She's very uh, liberal. She's gone hard after conservatives, and I saw conservatives being like, this is uh, she shouldn't get fired. Yeah, I, I said it myself. I yeah. said, should she? No. I mean, do I agree with her? No. No. I mean, I mean you know, should, should she be fired? No. Um, and, and my thing is, it wasn't conservatives that fired her from the gig. No, it was liberals. <laughs> and what I would love to see is people. I talk about this on my podcast a lot, where it's like people. I, I wish we had like principles instead of partisanship, right? Mm-hmm. So the best example of this was Roseanne Barr gets fired because the left is going to bring that up. I want, her ask, racist, I want your right? opinion on that. Yeah. Well, I think the bigger thing is. So all these liberals are like, "This is too far. She's a racist. She has to fire. She has to get fired." Two weeks later, the right finds an old joke James Gunn did, the director Mm -hmm. of Guardians of the Galaxy. A couple of jokes. Yeah, a couple, right? (laughs) James Gunn has to get fired. Now, all the people that were blindly defending Roseanne uh, are suddenly outraged or triggered by James Gunn. All the liberals that were offended by Roseanne are suddenly defending James Gunn. Oh, it was only a joke. Well, you didn't say that with Roseanne. And then the right, oh, it was only a joke with Roseanne. Well, you're not sh- saying that with James Gunn. Mm-hmm. I implore people to figure out what you believe, not what your team stands for, right? Mm-hmm. If you think Trump is creepy with women, then you should probably think Bill Clinton is creepy with women. If you didn't like when George Bush droned people, then you shouldn't like when Obama droned people. Mm-hmm. If you don't like what Roseanne said, you shouldn't like what James Gunn said, vice versa. But now we just log on to Twitter we look at our trending topics and we get our marching orders. Yeah. We go, who is our team mad at? This is what I did. Who is our team mad at? I don't have time to read the article. I got to get my clever tweet out. So I'm going to put it out there and then I'm going to sit there and I'm going to refresh. No one actually gave a shit what Roseanne said. No one actually gave a shit what James Gunn said. Um, they, it was just these like, ha ha. You know what I mean? Like, gotcha. we're getting this yeah. guy too. Gotcha. And if we just, if people actually cared about issues then we could have conversations like this where it's like hey what should we do on gun control instead of you shouting your talking points at me me shouting my talking points at you um and i feel like there's a huge audience out there for it but most of them are kind of like maybe not on social media or maybe i mean what's cool is my audience isn't as big as my old show was yet but the people who listen are cool and there are conservative there are literally 50 year old conservatives in the church and like 17 year old gay punk kids and one of them maybe heard me on this network and the other one heard me because i interviewed their favorite band um but they're talking and yeah. they're getting along um and we can say whatever we want and no one's writing in because they got like offended um it's a harder road it would be a lot easier like i said to take yeah. that like either conservative money or liberal money and just I start left the left. attacking yeah dude um but instead i'm like <laughs> i told my agent i'm like i want to do a show where i talk to both people and they were like what yeah. what do whatever you want look i tell people all the time i said listen i'll listen to van jones's co- podcast and i'll listen to van jones talk and i'm like i always learn something from him now he's further left than 
Pluto. Yeah. But I'll learn something. He's a and, really smart guy. And he's a smart guy. And one of the things that I've heard Van Jones say that I that I kind of stuck with is he says, you know, there's a bird and then there's the wings of the bird. We want a big right wing, big left wing. That's an unhealthy bird. It's not mm-hmm. getting anywhere. You want you don't want to be out on the tips of the bird. You want to get into the body. Yeah. Come back into the middle. And my old friends would hate him for saying that. Yeah. And, also, but he I, said that he was honest. He was on Corolla. Yeah. He was on Adam Corolla, which I've been on multiple times, and he was on there. And so, you know, Corolla's kind of one of those guys who's a libertarian-ish kind yeah, of guy. Yeah. Leans a little conservative. And so I understand he was probably talking to the 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 fan base that was there but sure. still it's a great analogy yeah man and i heard uh i just had david from on my podcast george bush speechwriter um had him on my show asked him about iraq but asked him about it in a compassionate way instead of like you have blood on your hands yeah. and he said something really similar uh, I, I was listening to him and andrew sullivan having a conversation i think on sam harris's podcast when i was prepping for my interview with him and uh they talked about that. And you have these two conservative dudes that are like, yeah, I want a healthy right or I want a healthy left and I want a healthy right. But now, again, we're just so just like it's just like this like wagging contest where it's just filibusters and shutting people down. And, you know, meanwhile, they all hang out. They're all friends. The, you know, the Republicans and Democrats in it's Congress, like the, it's they're like just professional driving us wrestling. against each other. Exactly. Exactly. A hundred percent. Except at least professional wrestling is like entertaining and they're hot. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank God for the WWE. Which, by the way, if you did, you missed the uh, episode with Vicky Guerrero, go back and watch it. The, uh, <gasps> I'm gonna the, watch that. Yeah. I'm a huge W. I got catfished by a fake Mick Foley and like hitchhiked to meet him. It, it's like shocking. <laughs> I haven't been murdered like a million times over. Yeah, I'm a huge WWE fan. <laughs> we're we're friends. We have some great friends in the world of wrestling. We have do you? Gra- oh yeah, great friends. Oh. Undertaker is one of my besties. Stop it. Yeah. <gasps> oh, we do stuff with Undertaker throughout the year. She the last time I saw <laughs> the last time I saw it, she hasn't drank. Ashley hasn't drank in a long time either the last time i saw you get drunk was yep was on that vegas trip we were hanging out with mark calloway the undertaker here's what i'm praying i'm praying you got so drunk that they were like a sheep passed out and then suddenly you did the undertaker rise (laughs) just the very (laughs) were you there my My dad just sent me uh when i was a kid i went to this wwe hall of fame and uh i only had the guts because i was like 11 to take pictures of me with like the referees and like stuff like that and I met Undertaker, I guess, but I was so nervous. I just took a picture of him. Like, I was too nice. scared to get in the picture. Yeah. So, yeah, he just texted He's me that gentleman. picture. He's a gentleman. He's a sweetheart of a guy. Uh, One uh, of my besties. I, we love him. Well, wrestlers Amazing. are so cool because yeah. I, I was training for a while uh, in L.A. Because uh, I'm, I'm friends with a couple of, like, the NXT and WWE guys. And uh, uh, they're so cool because they're this combination of theater dorks Mm -hmm. and badass athletes so it's kind of like the best of both worlds you know what i mean where it's like oh they're really cool creative intelligent nerds but they're also like healthy and like lifting and like taking care of themselves and like those are the kind of people i just want to hang out with people who are doing dope like i don't i don't care about politics anymore i'm like i just want to hang out with like confident funny people yeah. Uh, uh yeah i'm just i'm sick well that's why when you, you know people were like you know hey i knew you were coming on the show and i was like i don't really want to talk politics let's just talk about life i you love know? talking about it, comedy i i i, I didn't really know you did like and, a ton and of stand-up it's, and it's a huge thing it's a huge thing and i think it is an art form it's a craft yeah it is a craft it is a finely tuned craft when it's done correctly and it's something that i think it is the epitome of free speech. Yeah. It is also a bastion of American poly, uh, just just American way of life of being able to say, let's poke fun yeah. at ourselves. Yeah, and it's so crazy because there are so many whispers now that happen with bookers and agents and stuff where it's the it's the like, well, I, I want to book you. Yeah. But like uh, people might get offended or people oh, might I've get had upset. It over and over. Yeah. Re- yeah well, I, I actually wanted to ask you. Uh, I was going to ask you off here, but I'll ask you now. Um, because you lean right. So like I told my agent, my agent's super supportive. And my agent was like, I told him I was like, hey, I'm doing Glenn Beck show. And I'm doing a bunch of shows on the blaze. And he was like, look, I think it's great as long as you're staying true to yourself. And mm-hmm. to my agents, like credit having a big Hollywood agent. Be like, be true to yourself is like pretty rare. Um, and yeah. great. He was like, if suddenly you pretended to be a right wing guy, he was like, I'm not interested in that, yeah. which like awesome. That's how I feel. Um, but agreed, by the way. Yeah, totally. 100%, yeah. Um, but at the same time, like it, it is interesting because knowing that like, yeah, I'm wondering if for you was being more conservative 
did that help in the sense that you're like, hey, it's rare in the comedy world and I have an audience that will come to see me or did all are have you had like agents in L.A. people be kind of just like Ugh, and kind of be nervous and you've had to do it more. Well, independently? Well, I'll, I'll give you a couple of little anecdotes. So my agent, very supportive. Uh, he's he's a big agent, handles some very big names and he took me under his wing and he's kind of become family to me. That's which awesome. You hear the stereotypes, as we talked about before the show, <laughs> you hear the stereotypes about the agents and the snakes in the grass. They'll sell yeah. your soul to the devil at the crossroads for their 10 percent. Yeah. You know, they're, they're, yes, it's about money. It's about business. But. What I learned is I have, there's, you know, a lot of the theaters, because I don't do a lot of clubs. Yeah. I, those come and go, but I do a lot of theaters. A lot of the theater owners and the venue owners are, they tend to be liberal. Because sure. they come from the art yeah, side yeah, of things, yeah. and they tend to be, that's a liberal genre, right? And so I've had places that were like, yeah, no, we're just not going to have him in. I mean, it's just, we're scared, you yeah. know? I, I mean, I went, I did a show this past week in Missoula, Montana, where I got death threats and all this stuff because there was a hit piece done on me where this guy totally, you know, went after me. In Montana? Yeah. Oh, Missoula's kind of liberal, right? Missoula's pretty yeah, liberal. Okay. It's, 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 it's montana got it. Yeah, You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? And so it's, um, in my most supportive state, people have heard me say this over and over again, my most, most supportive state, the people that turn out is my shows in California. <laughs> Interestingly enough, when I was like super progressive, I would not do that great in San Francisco because they were kind of looking for stuff to like pick apart. Right. Like I remember once like I did like my like gay marriage jokes. Everyone was like, yay. I did my like drug legalization. They were like, yay. Yeah. Then I did something on race and they were like, oh, those people are in Oakland. Like we <laughs> keep it, mm, keep it down. Uh, the, I don't want the price of chia seeds to go up. Uh, <laughs> but my favorite, my, my best shows were Texas. Uh, a lot of my best shows were Texas or like, I'm like Iowa, like weird, like Midwest places. Well, so you come, so that makes perfect sense because you come to Texas and you have people think of it as a conservative state, yep. and it is. But then you have the liberals that are here and they want to come out. They're like, I want someone that speaks my language, yeah, and yeah, I want to yeah. come hear it. Same thing in California, California because you have those wondering. folks. Yeah. Now they're not in West. Hollywood, no. where I stay. I mean, I, I wear the cowboy hat in West Hollywood. It's like Hell revival yeah. of the village people. <laughs> I don't pay for any drinks. It's the best. And so, and so it's fantastic. You know, did you meet on Grinder? Yes. <laughs> uh, but you know, I'll do I'll do sixteen shows this year alone in California. Yeah. California turns Whoa. out. California turns out. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. And I'm talking about San Jose and Redwood City. I, you know, I'm talking about San Francisco and yeah, L.A., yeah. Anaheim. We're all in Brea, Irvine. You know, we go to these places. Yeah, we go to the Vesalias and the Bakersfields and the Reddings, but we get we get to the coast too. Well, sir, if you need an opener, I am not getting booked. Uh, <laughs> I think you and I are going to get along my just fine. My calendar is empty. I think you and I get along just as fine. As long as you don't bring your cat and cry on stage. I will, I will not bring my cat. I, oh, I want to be a vegan. <laughs> Dude, I like. I'm. I, I. I'm literally at the point where on Sunday, and part of me kind of likes this. So I moved out of L.A. And there's this guy, Paul Provenza. Do you know Paul? Yeah. So he hosted that show, The Green Room, that I did with Ron White mm -hmm. and uh, made the movie The Aristocrats. And Paul's been like a huge mentor of mine. And uh, I told him I was leaving L.A. And I was just like, I was like, this thing killed me, man. Like, I can't afford it. I was like, I'm trying to build up the podcast. And, uh, you know, my girl and I just wanted to get get out of L.A. And I assumed that meant I was quitting stand up. And Paul was the one who put me up on his couch for like the Edinburgh Festival. And like, he literally like discovered me. And he goes, getting out of L.A. is going to be the best thing for your comedy mm -hmm. because you're going to remember why you started comedy. And why you started comedy was because of jokes. And mm -hmm. why you started comedy was to make people laugh or because you were so excited about a new joke, you'd run to an open mic. And in L.A., I started thinking, who's going to be in the audience? Who read that Jezebel piece? Who's going to think this about me? And it was so nerve wracking. Um, you know, if I say uh, this offensive word, are they A, going to get offended or are they B, going to think it's calculated and that I'm trying to appeal to a right wing audience? Like, okay. I was just overthinking everything. And, uh, and I'm just back to I am I fly home tomorrow and I'm driving five and a half hours to do a bar gig for a hundred dollars. I don't even think I'm going to break even. And, but that's what I did when I was 22. Yeah. And I was like, until I start getting gigs, I told my agent, I was like, I don't even want a headline. I was like, I want to find cool comics to open for. I'll pay my own way. I was like, I will lose money. Um, I just want to remember what it's like to be on stage and love comedy because this whole thing, I mean, man, when it first happened, 
and I disappeared and I started teaching jujitsu. I was like, this will be my life. I'll have a studio apartment. I'm giving back to a community for the first time in my life. I love jujitsu. Um, and then I just miss comedy so much, but even having this conversation with you, I just forgot what it was like to be able to have good hearted conversations, but where you can say anything and you're yeah. just trying to get a laugh and no one's taking personally. And I was like, right, this is what it felt like when I used to hang out with comics. Um, and I'm just like working my ass off to like get back to that place. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, that's what it's all about. And uh, you know, when I went out, we were out last year, we were pitching a sitcom to all the networks. Yeah. We're sitting down with all these studio executives and I'm sitting down at ABC. This was right after the Roseanne deal. <sighs> And the first thing out of her mouth, looking across, of course, it was tongue in cheek. It was wildly inappropriate, but I didn't care. You know, she goes, "So, do you take Ambien?" Whoa! It's <laughs> <laughs> like, well, that's like the least professional thing wow. that you could ask me wow. because what you did was you automatically categorized me as a conservative, sure, because you knew my stuff. And I'm Although here. Although Ambien, I'd say, is a liberal stereotype. But here, but here, I'm saying to do that because again, Roseanne blamed the Ambien whenever she talked about Valerie Jarrett. Oh my God! And she said, "I took Ambien, and that's why right, I right, did right. the I thing." And so th that that's what happened. And and I'm like, yeah, no, but whatever. And so <laughs> when I go to L.A. and we're working on, I've got great writers. I mean, I've got writers who they were executive producers of major, major shows. I've, I've been fortunate enough to have some folks who come along who said, this makes sense. You know, we had mm -hmm. Eric uh, Rosenbaum, uh, Tannenbaum. And so they, you know, he had um, uh, two and a half men for 11 seasons. on. Jeez, you know, yeah. Eric Tannenbaum, is a, I mean, he's a star out there. He's had everything. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, this sitcom idea makes sense because it's common sense, and the, the American needs this. Yeah. And every studio out there just turns their nose up at it, and they're like, wow. no, he's conservative. And I'm like, that's not how you make money. And by the way, not even just money, but like, it's also not how you change people's mind. Yeah. Like, if you... This is why I don't think like Alex Jones should have been banned. Um, so I, we'll, we'll go farther right than conservatives with Alex. But like, I don't want those people who listen to Alex Jones to feel more oppressed mm -hmm. and disappear into the shadows. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like people on the left, again, will call me like a conservative sellout because conservatives listen to my show or because I retweet you guys now or I'm friends with you guys. And to me, it's like if you actually stand by your convictions and want to change people's mind, isn't it better that conservatives listen to me as opposed to yeah. uh, if it was only liberals and we were just like circle jerking each other? But no, they would rather just be righteous and miserable. Yeah. Um, and it's like, yo, okay, maybe I'm changing my mind and becoming a little more conservative on some issues, but also maybe I'm changing a lot of conservative minds and making them a little more liberal on some issues. Um that to me is good and important and healthy dialogue. Uh, but they, that, that doesn't play into like the, their, their sort of like martyrdom, no. um, on <laughs> social media. So what I was going to say was so with your show where it's like one, you're ignoring 50% of the country, yeah. but also you're doing the thing conservatives say you do where you're, you know, a liberal Hollywood is denying a platform to someone who represents a good. Now, look, if your show was called like, you know, Chad chases black people, then it's like, well, all right. Like if I'm a barbecue store owner and I have pamphlets out there for white supremacy yeah, 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 yeah. and then the black people in the community want to come to my place because it's the best freaking barbecue. Like, you know, like that's a funny concept, yeah. but I don't think that's going to sell Probably in Hollywood. Probably not going to fly. Or if yeah. you're like, we want to show like the lighter side of the clan. It's like a family sitcom with just like everyone wears the hoods the whole time. Um, they're like mixing up the kids because you can't been tell. Hadn't since Chappelle. No, which right, was exactly. genius. Which was genius. Uh, but now, of course, again, like Chappelle then defied the left. And now Chappelle's an enemy of the left. Yeah, sure. It's just, dude, like you can't. I wish people would just post about shit like like what do you like what makes you happy instead of logging on every day just to find like why you're outraged or why you're mad yeah. like there's a lot of good stuff in the world that you are missing out on uh because you're glued to your phone just angry all the time it's yeah. just not worth it
No, I, I say it all the time. I said the, the online, the internet has us. It was it was better when we sat on the toilet and read the shampoo bottles. Oh, right? 100%. And, and just ch- tried to figure out the pattern of the wallpaper. Yeah. But these days. It's... And you had time to like make up your mind. Like you'd, you'd watch the news and instead of being like, oh, I have to get this line out. You could actually like think about it and your friend would think about it. And then you get together at dinner and be like, hey, what did you think about this? Yeah. As opposed to just seeing some like insane tweet and be like guy you know or i'm gonna block him or whatever like it's just it's such a waste of time man and maybe i'm wrong maybe this is now me being naive and rebelling about what happened to me but i can tell you that like i've been having the best time in my life just focusing on like people i care about uh hanging out with people who have different opinions than me doing jujitsu like doing this podcast i mean the fact that i'm gonna have a bush speechwriter and then noam chomsky wants to do my show like next week like having both of those people like that's cool and you saying nice when you hear noam chomsky is the opposite of when i posted that i was gonna have david from on the show and all these liberals were like you're gonna ask him about that it's like calm down like i want to find out what someone who i disagreed with vehemently uh thinks and I want to know why he made those decisions. Yeah. And maybe I'll agree with him. And maybe I won't. And that's cool. That's a yeah. conversation. That's, that's the way it is. Because that is... This country was created on debate and dialogue and discussion. Oh, my God. I know. The ability to disagree. And people forget and that. They, and they can't do that No, anymore. you're just... If you disagree or if you say the wrong thing... And I don't know if this happens as much on the right. Maybe it does. Uh, oh, but it on the does. left... I don't, you don't have to say it. I can gone. just tell you it does. It does, Because right? human nature... I don't care what your politic, political viewpoint or conviction is... Human nature is still human nature. Right. People are insecure people. Yes. I don't care how confident you think you are. People are flawed. They're frail. They're faulty. They and, and so wherever you go with that, you don't know how to deal with disagreement. Right. You just don't know how to deal with it. Right. Well, and then that goes back to what we like opened with, where it was if people could just be self aware, if you could be excited to be wrong, right? Like if I'm wrong about something. Isn't that good? Isn't that good that I have the power to make a decision to make my life better or to make, you know, if, if, if me and my girlfriend are arguing and I realize I'm the wrong one, it's like, oh, I have the power to end this. We can go back to being happy. Yeah. It's like, I can be like oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. Right. But it's so hard. We're all so fragile. The right and left. We're all snowflakes. Right. It's yeah. all of it's us. It's true. We all are. Yeah. Like I see people, I see conservatives like with their fake outrage the same way I see liberals with their fake outrage. Yeah. Like the bottom line is if our only goal is how can we be better people? How can we be better friends? How can we be better husbands or brothers or whatever? Um, and that means confronting the shit we do wrong. Like I've done a lot wrong. Um, but if I didn't learn from it and if I doubled down and if i just got angrier and more bitter and shouted dude that is not a life i want to live right at all if you've watched this podcast or listened to this podcast and you are triggered in any way shape or form <laughs> then you need to expand your mind mm-hmm. you need to open your mind up to thoughts that are beyond your narrow vision because a laser can be a dangerous thing it can be a powerful thing you know if you're narrow-minded is you know a laser can be used to heal or it can be used to destroy. It's all in how you use that. And I encourage people all the time, expand your horizon on that. This is one of those episodes that I think should be able to do that with people. It's fun. I could do this for hours and hours. Oh, me too, man. Jamie Kilstein, the Jamie Kilstein podcast. You need to get on it. Yes. Check him out. Go on there. Don't believe everything you read on Wikipedia. <laughs> don't read every. Don't or believe edit every. it if you know yeah. how to do if it. If you know how to do it, and trust me. There's things on mine that I want edited. Oh my god. There's things that need to be updated. Apparently, I'm not important enough for somebody to go on there and tell the <laughs> freaking truth. So, <laughs> I hate Wikipedia, dude. Uh, I catch more crap from Wikipedia. Yeah. But anyway, yes, I was born in New Jersey. I grew up in Georgia. I lived there four months. Okay? I, uh, I'm Jersey too. I'm yeah. like yeah. Central, yeah, I heard you say Trenton-ish. you grew up in Jersey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was in Ramsey. The- we just went. We just went. So we just went and did a show. I love doing new markets. Like we w- we just did New Brunswick. We did two nights in New Brunswick. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. my home club. That was where I started. No kidding. Yeah, I started doing. Had the, a blast. The Wednesday dude. open mic. So fun. Had a blast. Yep. And uh, we were there two nights. Killed it. Had a just a fun, fun time. Great people. And Vinny uh, Brand. Yeah, Eddie Brand. We do. He came the second night and he hung out. And then they had a they had uh, late that night they had another show and Eddie opened for him and I'm like. Yeah, it, we just had a blast. We sat back there in that little green room and, yep. and just chatted and oh, talked. Oh, that's so and, nostalgic. Yeah. yeah, and we just had a blast. And and I love getting around those guys and just talking. And, and um, you know, he's a conservative-leaning guy. Vinny, he, yeah. He, Vinny, Vinny's, a, Vinny's a conservative. You know, and 
because Vinny, you know, we were like, originally we were going to do two shows a night. And we're like, well, we're just not selling like that. But we can do one show each night and do great. And Vinny comes in there. And Vinny was like, he's, you know, he's like, man, I I wish I could. uh, Off air, I'll tell you some of the things that Vinny said. Well, I can tell you this. I can tell you my experience with Vinny is started at that club, then got super liberal. And probably, I think on like Twitter or something, man, I've ruined so many connections. I'm pretty sure I like uh, the the guy who now books Netflix specials. I was like, you hate Palestinians on Twitter. Me and him used to be friends. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I really blew that Netflix special <laughs> opportunity because I was an <laughs> asshole on Twitter. Um, but Vinny, I decided to reach out to because I was like, this guy gave me my start. And uh, yeah, I probably mouthed off to him on Twitter and I just DM'd him and I was like, hey, man, I really hope I wasn't an asshole to you. Um, and he goes, can I call you? And we just talked on the phone for like an hour about politics and again, figured out we agreed on so much. So like, exactly. We talked about uh, we talked about climate change and he was like, I don't care what a lot of these liberals are saying. And I think that the Green New Deal is kind of trash and uh, that there are a lot of doomsday people. But I believe in capitalism and I want America to be number one in the world when it comes to like yeah. alternative energy. And it's like. Whoa, we want the same thing, but for different reasons. That's exactly cool. right. Like so let's no do that. one on the right, like no one on the right is opposed to legal immigration. Right. We want immigrants to yeah. come in here. We just want we want you to be able to come in the right way. Sure. And not milk the system or hurt the system. Is the system broken? Yes. We don't want it further broken, yeah. right? So like I don't know anybody on the right. That wants mass shootings to happen. We want, like you had a conversation with Jason Buttrell, we don't want that to happen. Yeah. What do we need to do to fix that? And so there's so many things that we agree on in terms of we want the same result. We just have different methods and ideas of how to get to that result. And the problem is we never hear about those because everyone yells at each other on Twitter and then they get so defensive that they don't want to have the conversation. Yeah. So, for example, like I was talking to um, uh, uh, the host of the the, the new show, um, done so many shows Sarah? today, Sarah, Sarah. A- and uh, and I was like, what do we do with like the kids in cages? But I didn't say It's your fault there are kids in cages. And she was like, I think it's horrible what it is. And the problem is people on the right just get so defensive and they're so tired of being accused of like being people who want to see like who are pro kids in cages that they'll just be like, ah, the dad shouldn't break the law. And it's like, well, that's not really an empathetic way. Like you could be right. Sure. Um, but at the same time, it's like that doesn't get that kid out of the cage. I would much rather have a conversation that's like, all right, if our immigration system is broken and my idea isn't working and your idea isn't working, how do we get the kids out of cages? Um, but to believe that all Republicans are pro kids in cages with no soap is insane. But the problem is we get so defensive online because if if you're a Republican and anytime you engage with a liberal, they're calling you a Nazi or a racist, then when Trump does something racist, why are you going to want to a- – Attack Trump. You're just going to stay quiet because you're going to be like, those liberals, man. I don't want them to be right. But now I'm talking to a bunch of conservatives and like a lot of them agree with most things I say, but they're not going to phrase it that way online or we're not going to give them a chance to right. um, because we're just going to shout them down um, or they're just going to go. F- you. Why, why, why should I talk to you about it? You're going to call me a Nazi or you're going to call me whatever. And, and there's an element of truth to that. There yeah. is because. I had a guy who sent me a message the other day and I'd made some joke or something. And the guy goes, this is why we hate. This is why you guys get so much hate on the right because you're brainwashed and this is why you receive it. And I said, no, we get hate because you have hate in your heart. He goes, I don't have hate in my heart. And I said, then why even use the word hate? Right. I've never said I hate somebody. Right. I've never said that I hate you or I hate this or hate that. I, look, we're all wanting the same goals. There's just different methods to how we get to those goals. Yeah. I mean, that's where we're disagreeing. We're not disagreeing on the goals. We're, like, like we don't want kids in cages. Right. There, this, there's, and I spent the better part of 20 years of my life in third world countries. I've been with these people. Locking kids up in cages? Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> we brought the cages down. They're real <laughs> to travel with. They really are. You get the foldable little yeah. deals. Yeah, it's yeah, like no, a yeah. kennel. And, uh, but I the was Ikea like, you know, ones. and water bowls. And you, <laughs> there's a lot that goes into this. Yeah. yeah. People don't understand. You're the real heroes. This, I mean, the people who lot. set up the cages. We don't yeah. talk about them. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into this. But I've, I've seen it, you know, firsthand, and then you look at it, and I've always said, it, yes, it is a national security issue, but it's also a humanity issue. Right. And you have to approach it from both angles. And, dude, as silly as this sounds, and I'm sure your listeners will kill me for saying this, but, like, okay. that sounds like 
That is not something that people on the left would assume you would say. They wouldn't assume that. And it's just that. the most normal humanitarian thing to say. But like even you saying that, I was like, wow, that's a big deal. Or is that going to be used against you? Like it's, but th that's, of course, of course, most decent people say that. But yeah. again, when you look at Twitter, everyone's just so mad and so defensive that if someone's like, you want kids in cages, like, of course, I'm not going to answer delicately. I'm going to be like, fuck yourself. Um, <laughs> But yeah, those kind of, the conversations aren't happening. It's like, well, if we both want the same thing, then why don't we talk and not be little babies about it uh, and figure out some middle ground? Yeah, we got to get out of here. We're going to dinner. Let's hey, do it. You got to shoot guns, then you're going. To, we're going to dinner. Guns, guns. Um, I've never had a guest that says F the way you do, and I just love the way he says. F it's about, uh, hey, no, no, no. It was good. I just like the way you say. F it. It's good. Cool, cool, cool. I, that was my liberal part of me apologizing. Me like, I'm so sorry. No, no, <laughs> Am no. Am I in apologize. trouble? I I cracked up every time because I don't know. There's something to the way you say the word. F Cadence. <laughs> oh, it's it, it's uh it's panic and self hate. If you're wondering what the cadence is, it's Candace fear. Is on, Candace is on uh, page two of writing down times time stamps to see when she has to hit the bleep. Oh, I gave up a long time ago. I mean, look, I don't I'm care. So I, look, I don't care. We're you're adults fine. here. I, you know, look, it's just people. A word. I enjoy it. So it, we we've had a good conversation, dude. I'm in love with you. Thanks, I buddy. I don't mind saying it out loud. Oh, I don't yeah. want you to change. Like I like. I, I love like I don't need people I don't need people that agree with me. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't need people that that think exactly the way I do. God, that'd be a boring. Because well, then you're weak. It would be boring, yeah. right? Like if like if I have a conviction, I feel something. Like we began with this. Like if I believe it, then I believe it, and if it, it needs to be changed, then I want to be open minded enough to change it. I mean, how sad is it that people literally like the Twitter version is if you were just walking around with a bunch of people who clapped after everything you said? Yeah. It's like Jesus. Am I? Do I have no confidence in my convictions, my belief, my humor, my whatever that I just need to be like patted on the back for everything? I catch myself on Twitter, and I love Twitter. I, yeah. I didn't love it, but yeah. I, I'm now I'm like that's where I got my news. Right? Like yeah. I just want to see what people are thinking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's almost like the the podcast in 248 characters or whatever. Sure. So I, I'll post a joke or something, and I'll be like, I don't know if I should have done that. Yeah. And I'll let it sit. Ones. I'll let it sit for five minutes yeah. just to see what the reactions are. And most of them are like, eh, "That was pretty funny." And I'm like, "Okay, good. We'll leave it." Yep. Why do you live with that kind? Of, I mean, we live with that type of. We need this. this I know. Self aggrandizement from strangers yeah, you know what I, I mean i go back and forth because part of me like that's what got me in so much trouble was like being this asshole on twitter no it was putting your penis <laughs> oh that's right that's what it was it was uh i'm pretty sure it was twitter i'm pretty sure it was my tweets um yeah, yeah. and but uh but now i'm in this weird thing where i'm like i have to be on it to promote because i want people to listen to this new right, podcast sure, sure. but then there's part of me that's like once the podcast hits the numbers i need that i'm like peace i'm out come see me live come yeah. listen to the podcast i'm like i just don't have because i still follow i'm still like afraid to unfollow a bunch of like liberal people so i still see all of that stuff in my timeline yeah. and it's like it's too much man I just it does be on both sides though it is it's 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 tragic on both sides it's it tragic is. that's a good way to put it. it it is all right we're getting out of here cool. hey the jamie kilstein podcast go check it out Find him, Google him. You're gonna find him. You're gonna find maybe all not kind Google. Of stuff. Maybe just go to Twitter. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe don't <laughs> don't don't believe everything you or read. Or if you Google, like, uh, click on good things. Uh, yeah, just don't bump yeah, those fake numbers. news. Fake news, people. Candice, the queen of the Ethiopians. You asleep over there? No. You still good? It was a good interview. I yeah, loved it was it. great. I loved it, dude. I could do this for hours. With yes. You. Let me tell you, uh, Puppet Master Mark. Thank you for making us look good. Camerath. Yes, sir. You just sat over there all quiet and just hanging out. I was just listening. I really, Jamie, I really enjoyed your authenticity. Oh, thank yeah. you. I really enjoyed how raw and how real you are. Refreshing. And you, you, it's absolutely refreshing, and I do. I think we're starved for it. Oh, I think thanks, you, buddy. you do have a very interesting story and experience, and I love, I love what you're doing to embrace the thank new. Thank you. I'm also sorry I called you buddy. I now panic around women, <laughs> and I'm like, hello, platonic friend. Sure. Um, <laughs> but great, thank you. That, that, Not, that means, trust me, it that, takes a lot more to offend me. She'll pee on you even. later. <laughs> <laughs> that means a lot. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, CP. Good to see you. You got it, girl. I'm so happy to see you. We go. Let's go to dinner, okay? Let's do it. Go out and have and and uh, have some camera. Out. I love you so much. You're you're one of those sisters I never had, and and um, God, we got a lot of history. It's craziness. Yeah. So thanks for sitting in. But I agree with you. It's refreshing. It's authentic, and that's the kind of conversation I like to have. I don't like echo chambers. I really don't. It's the worst. I don't. I just it gets old. I don't, I don't need that kind of. You know. Anyway, we're getting out of here. 
Go to blazetv.com slash humor. Use promo code Chad. Get your first 30 days free. You can uh, watch our show, Humor Me, which is very, very good. Bougie Sean and Metro Jason do a fantastic job of putting that show together week after week. Uh, and you're going to see a fun episode with Tad Papafopoulos and the uh, transgender Beverly. Um, it's a great interview. You don't want to miss this. It's a lot of fun. Go get Humor Me. BlazeTV.com slash humor. Use promo code Chad. I love y'all. God bless. We'll see you out there. Talk to you later. Bye.